coastal erosion threatens the shorelines of Cape Cod and Cape Verde. So when we talk about erosion, we have to talk about how the beach is always changing. Erosion is simply when you have more sand leaving a certain area than is coming in to replace it. The power behind sand movement is wind. Wind moves along the water and creates waves. These waves will strike the beach, mobilize the grains of sand, and move them along the shoreline. Two factors are speeding up erosion across the world. Sea level rise and more frequent intense storms. In Cape Verde, sand harvesting makes erosion worse. Some harvesting is when the people with trucks just come inside the beach and just collect sand. After 10 years, they can just destroy a giant 5 kilometer sand beach. The country is growing, and the sand is used in local construction projects. It's how some Cape Verdeans make a living. It is illegal, first of all. It is a long fight to, to try to stop it. Sand harvesting also destroys the dune structures that protect the islands from sea level rise and heavy storms. Everything in nature is balanced. When you, when you disturb this balance, we see a cascade of um, bad things happening. Coastal structures that people build can also impact erosion. Cape Cod is one example of a place where seawalls are built to protect people's properties. When people try to protect their homes, they'll often build a seawall or some kind of armor to protect them. While that protects the house, it's usually at the expense of the beaches and dunes in front of the house. It's very important for Cape Cod and Cape Verde to find ways to deal with erosion because the sandy beaches are important for humans and animals. Piping plovers, snowy owls, and horseshoe crabs are just some of the animals that live on Cape Cod's coastal habitats. Cape Verde is a global hotspot for sea turtle reproduction. Sea turtles lay their eggs in the sand, the temperature of which determines the sex of the babies. Beaches with less sand are hotter, and hotter sand means more turtles are born female. When this happens, the ratio of females to males becomes imbalanced. These two together, global warming and sand extraction, will be a really big problem for reptiles, not just for the sea turtles. The United States and Cape Verde governments create regulations to protect the coastline from erosion. Scientific and environmental organizations try to prevent future problems by conducting research and educating the public. One of the things being encouraged right now is to try to get away from the standard shoreline armor like seawalls. So what we would do is do something like beach nourishment, which is less impactful to dunes and beaches. Rebuilding sand dunes is also a natural way of protecting the coastline from heavy storms and waves, especially in Cape Verde. Planting native trees and other plants keep the sand in place. Dunes can stop ocean water from traveling inland and flooding homes and farms. The, the concerns are the islands that are flat, Sto uh, uh, storms coming and it's potentially uh, pr producing uh, uh, hurricanes every year. Being a poor country, lots of people don't live with good conditions in their house, so we were going to suffer with that, of course. The public plays an important role in protecting and adapting the coastline, too. One thing you can do to try to preserve our beaches and dunes is to not walk on our vegetated dunes. We cannot wait for the politician, because the politician, they create regulations. But we don't have money to, to, to make fiscalization. But what we can do? So let's empower the people. I believe the uh, uh, environmental education is the key. All the NGOs are working together really hard to make a really good campaigns of environmental education. And I quite believe the next generation will change a lot.